Hello everyone, what's going on? Gareth the Master974 back again today doing another Valve Source Code tutorial video and today I'm going to look into a guide that has been recommended to me by the same people that the last Valve Source Code tutorial included. Those people being Bonnie39 and Utopic Tahu. Thank you so much for suggesting the custom loading background thing that I'm going to be talking about in this video and for also suggesting the animated menu background tutorial that was the last tutorial video that I did. Already screwing up immediately at the beginning of the video is always a good sign isn't it? Anyway so let's get into what you'd actually need to do to get this feature to work. So I'm going to leave a link in the description of the video that will take you to a Valve Developer Wiki article outlining this feature and you can follow along if you want to but there is a much better version of this that I'll get to a little later. So let's get to this less than desirable version first and get to the better version later. Oh and if you're going to be using this code then please make sure to give credit to Maestro Phoenix. I'm probably butchering that name but thank you to them for making this guide possible. So what you want to do is open up your game's solution in your source code directory, usual stuff. And then you want to go to the client project and you want to right click and add a new item. And you want to add two new files. You want to add mapload.background.h and mapload.background.cpp as you'll see in the video. And then what you can do is simply copy and paste the code that you'll see from the guide into these respective files. They aren't particularly large, so this should be a fairly simple step to do. And then you want to go to the client mode shared.cpp file and in the hashtag include section, you want to add hashtag include of game UI forward slash igameui.h and also a hashtag include of mapload backgrounds.h. After the static VGUI colon colon h context line, you want to add a static CDLL demand loader called G underscore game UI and then in brackets and speech marks game UI as you see in the video. And then after the extern ball is in commentary mode line, you want to add a CMAP load BG called asterisk P panel BG and an I material called asterisk P mat map BG. And then in the client mode shared function, after the m underscore n root size line, you want to add p panel bg equals null and p mat map bg equals null. And then in the init function, after the hook message rumble line, you want to copy and paste the block of code from the guide. After this, you want to go to the level init function and after the engine sound arrow set player DSP line, you want to copy and paste the block of code that you see in the guide. And this next step I'm going to get to is if you want to suppress the loading dialog because in its current state, if you were to, for example, save and compile, then you'd get the loading bars at the bottom right hand side of the screen. And you might not want that. So if you want to disable it, then you just need to follow this additional step. So you want to go to map load backgrounds.h and underneath the void set new background image function, you want to add void on message passing through inputs of a const key values called asterisk params and a VGUI colon colon V panel called from panel. And then at the end of the map load backgrounds.cpp file, you want to copy and paste the code that is in the guide. So by adding that code, you essentially remove the loading message from actually showing up when you load into a map. Okay, so now we're going to move on to non-source code changes. So you want to go to your game folder, wherever that might be, the mod folder where you have gameinfo.txt and all that stuff. And you want to go into the resource folder and you want to create a file or save a file called loading dialog background.res. And you want to inside that file have what you see in the video. It's essentially from the guide, but it creates the loading image, you know, key value and assigns all different parameters like X pars, wide, tall, and uh, image and stuff like that. Then you want to go to the materials folder and VGUI and create any directories that don't exist. For example, in the VGUI folder, create a folder called loading. 
And you also want to create a folder called maps inside of the loading folder. But in the actual loading folder, you want to create a .vmt file and call it default. And you want to populate that file with what you see from the guide, which includes stuff like the shader, the base texture, and other parameters that the .vmt file should have. But then inside of the maps folder, so in this case, it's materials, VGUI, loading, and maps, then you want to create .vmt and .vtf files with the name of the map in question. So for example, SDK underscore vehicles or D1 underscore train station underscore 02. So whatever map name related to the chapter or whatever you want to actually load. And then for the VTF, you want to, for example, make them 2048 by 1024 pixels in size. And if you're using something like VTF edit, then you want to select the flags, no MIP map, no level of detail and no minimum MIP map. At this point, you can pretty much compile the code and boot into the game. And for example, if you were to boot into chapter one in an unmodified mod, it would load up the SDK vehicles map. And as long as you have the SDK vehicles, VTF and VMT files in the folder that I told you to place the files, then you should end up seeing that image at some point when you load into the map. However, one issue with this functionality as it currently stands is that the default image shows up for like 95% of the loading time. And then the image that you actually want to see shows up right at the very end of the loading process. And if you try to disconnect or switch maps, then the previous loading image, like the image that's supposed to show up with the actual map that you wanted to load in the first place shows up. So yeah, as you can probably see from the video footage, this is a less than desirable feature to add, but thankfully there is a much better version that exists. So I do need to give a big ups to Cvoxolui for producing this updated version of the map loading background feature. And there's also another contributor, Sylvian Sylvia, thank you for allowing this to exist. And so let's get into what you would need to do to actually incorporate this better version of the custom loading image feature. So you want to download a zip of the repository from GitHub, and then you want to go into the code game folder, and you should see that there's the client and shared folders. So you just want to copy paste those into your source codes, SRC game folder where the client and shared folders are. You're going to be asked if you want to overwrite three files and they are client mode shared, which we modified earlier. It makes all of the changes that we made earlier, but also in the shared folder, you'll be changing util shared.cpp and util shared.h. And then you want to go to the game folder and then you want to go into the resource folder. And if you open it up, you should see modenglish.txt and you'll see a load of loading screen tips. Under normal circumstances, what it will do is it will show a randomized tip, like a hint on the screen when you load into a map. So if you want to add that feature, then you want to copy these text strings into your mod name underscore language.txt file that exists in your mod. So in my case, it's just going to be mod hl2 English and just copy paste the text strings into that file so they actually show up correctly. And then the other folder that exists is the materials folder that includes different loading.vmt images and also an example.vmt file for one of the maps. Now, one of the things that I've noticed is that, that there's one slight difference with the parameters that are passed through the .vmt file, which is that dollar sign additive zero seems to be added. So you might want to make that change to all of the files if you want to. But what this should do is allow for different default loading images if the map you're trying to load doesn't actually have a background image. All right, so now that you've made the code changes, you want to actually go into your game solution again. And if you added the map load background stuff, you want to remove it. And then you actually want to go into the client project, add an existing item, and then you want to go to client loading screens and add the iLoading background files that exist there, and then compile the code. 
Now, if you have any errors saying something like the util get current map function is invalid or doesn't exist, then just rebuild the solution because that's defined in util shared.cpp and util shared.h. And you need to actually recompile those files so the changes that were made actually get accommodated properly. So with that being said and done, if you try to load into a map, or at least you start a new chapter, for my testing at least, that's the only way to get this custom loading screen thing to work, then supposing the image actually exists in the location that it's supposed to exist in, which is supposed to be the materials VGUI loading and maps folder, then you'll actually see that image, you'll get a randomized hint, if you follow the step earlier about adding the custom hints and you'll get a custom horizontal load bar and also a lambda load bar which is very reminiscent of the gamepad ui feature and so the last thing i'm going to get into is how you get rid of some of these features if you don't want them for example removing the hints so what i figured out that you could do is if you go to the iloadingbackgrounds.h file then underneath the hashtag defines for example hashtag define enable loading tip then underneath that what you can add is something like hash if defined of enable loading tip then hashtag undef of enable loading tip and then hashtag endif or you could do something completely different like for example just comment out the definition that way, when you go down through the code, you should see that it ends up blocking the code that the loading tip or loading real stuff would actually end up adding. So with those changes being made, you can again recompile the code, load into a map, and you should see, for example, that the loading tips will no longer show up. And a better improvement over the you know, first method that I showed which is that the background image for the map you're trying to load pretty much displays instantly without any issues and you can disconnect load into other maps and the background images for those maps show up without any issues. So that's how you'd go about adding a custom image that displays when you try to load into a map. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if it's a bit shit then I'm sorry I just don't like doing these audio commentaries sometimes. And I'm often making mistakes, especially when I don't really script any of this stuff out. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope to have another video out very soon. And as always, take care of their peace out. See you later. Have a great day. See you later, guys.